On today's episode, we have a few cool new things we're doing. First, we're recording both audio and video. And we're going to be talking about the difference between pressure and stress. And I have a guest that's on today, and she's going to teach us three different breathing techniques to help us relieve and reduce stress. Stay tuned. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tamara's Takeaways. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson on the Stories of Hope in Hard Times podcast. And today I have an extra special treat for you because usually I just do a takeaways episode all by myself. But since my last takeaways episode was all about stress, I've been researching some more amazing stress relieving techniques because I feel I need it. And I know everybody else probably does too. And so because last week's episode was my interview with Katie Willis, I thought it would be so fun to bring her back on today because she has some specialties that she's willing to share with us. And the cool thing about Katie is she has such a huge and broad background. She not only is a nurse, but she's also a certified Kundalini yoga instructor. She's a certified practitioner in quantum neuro reset therapy. And she is also a Christian. And so what is cool about this is she can kind of give us a Christian's take on breathing and yoga, which I love yoga, but I I don't, you know, I don't know as much about it as she does. So Katie, thank you for being with us today. (laughs) Again, thank you so much for having me. And wow, what a warm welcome. (laughs) Well, this is so fun. Now, in in our interview last week, you talked about how yoga became a way for you to kind of help begin the healing process from the stressors caused by the addiction and the betrayal trauma from your husband's addiction to pornography. How did you find yoga to begin with? (laughs) I I love the way that you introduced this episode because... As yoga came across my path from multiple people in my life who I trusted, it was at a time in my life where I'm like, really? Yoga? (laughs) Like, that's so weird. And so, you know, I just want to validate that as Christians, especially, you know, that's, that's out of the box. And especially at the time when I found it eight years ago, Mm -hmm. it was not as well known and as well accepted in the West. Mm -hmm. And so as I heard about it from multiple people, I'm like, okay, this keeps coming across my path for a reason. So I finally sat down, tried to do what research I could. I couldn't necessarily find anything like, you know, amazing like you can now because of the studies that have been released in recent years, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't find anything that, you know, made it seem like I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so then as I prayed about it, you know, studied it out, it felt like worth at least trying. So I hopped on Amazon I ordered a DVD set, I popped it in, and at that point, Mark was working three jobs, full-time, part-time, on-call, so I'd have a couple hours every night between putting the kids to bed and before he came home, so that was when Mm. I would do my self-care routine, and I remember that first night, I'm like, I don't know what the heck this was, like, it was kind of (laughs) weird, you know, but I felt amazing, like, physically and mentally, emotionally, I just felt so clear, and so the next night, I popped another DVD in and Mm -hmm. kept moving, and so, as I said, it's now been eight years that I've kept up a daily yoga practice almost every day, Mm -hmm. and, um, I finally realized as, again, the research has been catching up at the time, I had no idea the gem that had crossed my path, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but with more and more research, I realized what I was doing and why it was so effective for what I was going through. And I realized that I could not, not teach other people. And so I've spent the past few years literally traveling all over the country, 
hoping to gather in the best of everything because I want people to have these tools that I, I've learned from personal experience, my own body, my own mind, my own walk with God and my Savior. These are impressive, impressive tools. Kundalini yoga is the science of awareness. Mm. And so and that's it a is a big word now, us. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. To be more intentional and on purpose and conscious of what our body is doing, how it's talking to us, our mind. And again, I love that intro because for me, I've learned that yoga is helping me also spiritually to be more intentional about abiding in Jesus Christ from moment mm. to moment and seeing God in my life. I'm more aware spiritually, I feel like, because of this yoga practice. That is so cool. So let me ask you this. We live in a time when, when our stress level seems to be extremely high. There's a lot of stuff just blowing up, not only in our nation, but all around the world. We were talking before this episode started about the difference between pressure and stress. Would you mind sharing your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. So I feel like stress gets a bad rep, right? <laughs> yes, Especially in the West, you know, you're like, you're going to die of stress and and rightfully so, but the way that I would define the difference between pressure and stress is, is me, where I am at in that moment. If I have enough of a reserve and or I'm able to adapt and adjust and shift into low, low gear when something's coming up, mm -hmm. I am able to rise to meet that pressure and it stays pressure. Mm -hmm. But when I am too depleted, and or I'm so up in my head, I'm not here in my body, I'm not here in this present moment, so I'm having a hard time adapting to what's happening. Those things that are out of my control, right? Yes. Then like I'm going to be virus. Out, <laughs> right? And so many million things going on right now, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I guess for me, that's important to differentiate because pressure is not, quote, bad. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part of living on this planet, right? Yes, it is. It, it is what allows us to grow and become stronger physically. You know, you think when you're exercising and working certain muscles, it's not necessarily bad mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. But when we get to that point where it's becoming stress, I think of like a bank account, right? We have to have more in our checking balance than we're withdrawing or else we're going to get in trouble, <laughs> you know, yes. with our bank account. We're going to get in trouble with our physical health, our mental health. Spiritually, we're not going to have the same experience. So, so it's not that that situation or that thing is changing. It's where we're at in that mm -hmm. moment and whether or not we're able to rise to that stress and, and have the capacity to hold that. So I feel like yoga in this term, in these terms helps us in two big ways. And we're going to hit on both. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> so we'll hit on this first one in just a moment as we wrap up this discussion here in segue, but yoga can help us to increase uh, that reserve that we have and it's also helping us um, to be more present and tuned in to kind of shift gears like we were talking about. And we will play with that in a few different breath exercises so that you can experience what it's like. One of my trainers said something that to me was just so true and so profound. Um, his name is Siri Marka, and he said, the mind only surrenders to the breath. So when we change the way that we are breathing, or even just tune in and notice our breath, that can slice right through all of the mind games or the things that keep us stuck in our head. The breath has the power to shift our mood. Mm. And, you know, even in a few intentional breaths, certainly within three minutes of breathing wow. in specific ways and different breaths create different shifts. You know, some are more energizing, some are more calming and soothing. So we'll play with a couple different breaths. That would be great. <laughs> great. And the second way that yoga can help us to kind of manage stress, if that's mm -hmm. maybe the way we want to label it, mm -hmm. 
is by approaching yoga in a lifestyle way. So the way that I would describe that is every morning I unroll my yoga mat. I take that time really gathering into myself. I'm tuned in. I'm aware as I'm moving my body, I'm noticing the ways that my body is talking to me. And emotionally, mentally, I'm listening. For me, I feel like the way I experience emotions, it's such a bodily experience for me. Oh, it's true. <laughs> right? So I'm tuning into all of that and yeah. I'm observing my body. And for me, when I'm on my yoga mat, this is a safe space for any emotions that maybe are starting to build up or any unhealed parts of myself to kind of surface and come up. And the way that I would describe it as well is I'm able to go in and touch those places that are beyond the reach of words, okay? So I'm having this practice on my yoga mat. I roll up my mat. I put my yoga mat away, but I have the choice to continue living yoga for the rest of my day. So what that means to me is I might notice similar emotions coming up during the day. And because I dialed in and tuned into my body and into myself, I'm going to be able to rise and meet that pressure and keep it pressure, right? Because mm -hmm. I've got this reserve. I'm in the zone. I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Or when I see similar patterns coming up in my day, maybe as I'm interacting with somebody else, because I had a similar interaction with myself or my body on my yoga mat, that's able to stay pressure rather than become stressed. Now, I think as Christians, we might be able to relate with this even more than we might initially think. Because isn't it the same pattern as we have our daily time with God? For Absolutely. me, that means I'm opening my scriptures. I'm on my knees praying. I also include my journal time. That is, I'm anticipating my day. I'm working that out with God. That helps me to hear him. And even though I roll up my yoga mat, even though I shut my scriptures, I get up off my knees, because I've taken that time to put on my spiritual armor, and to tune my frequency to God, I am able to then turn for the rest of my day and abide in Jesus Christ from moment to moment and see God in my life. Even, you know, peanut butter sandwiches here. I homeschool my four kids again, you know, peanut butter <laughs> sandwiches and laundry. And all of these moments are different because of that time that I'm taking. So for me, if you haven't caught every day, I'm spending time in yoga meditation, time with God, because mm -hmm. that's dialing me into a different awareness of my body, of my mind, of things of the spirit yeah. than if I'm not incorporating it in a lifestyle way. Ooh, that is perfect. I, I couldn't have introduced today's episode any better than you just did. This is perfect. <laughs> so we thought that the best way to uh, kind of introduce us to yoga was to have Katie teach us a few breathing techniques because this is technically a podcast. And even though I am doing a video recording of this, it's easier to apply breathing techniques if you're running or if you're walking or if you're folding laundry, whatever you're doing while you're listening to this podcast, it's easy to pause and to try a breathing technique. So Katie, why don't you share with us some of these cool breathing techniques and how we can, and what they're for, and how we can use them, and when we can use them. Great. So the first one that we want to focus on is long, deep breathing. And there is a key point here that with compassion, with love, with gentleness, some of us actually breathe backwards. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. But learning to breathe correctly and deeply is such a huge game changer to us. There is so much oxygen that's available and we have such a huge lung capacity, but because of life experiences that we may have been through, you know, the trauma here, as we talked about in the previous episode, or maybe we tend towards anxiety. Again, there is such a huge connection between our mental, emotional health, our mood and our breath. 
So mm -hmm. this is a huge game changer. I would invite you if you are in a place where it's possible and where you feel comfortable to maybe consider coming to a lying down posture. Um, ideally, maybe the back if that's uncomfortable or if we are pregnant, we would roll over to our left side. If we are not in a place where we can lay down then go ahead finding a comfortable seated posture. The reason why I prefer uh, to teach beginners uh, breath by laying on their back is because we have a different experience with gravity when we're laying down. Specifically, as we're sitting, even just in a simple seated posture, we're having to engage the muscles of our core versus when we're laying down, we're able to relax those muscles a little bit easier. So I feel like it's easier to really tune in and notice the sensation that we'll be playing with here if we're laying down. Again, do the best that we can. And if we need to sit up for now, because maybe we're in the office and we're watching this or something, uh -huh. um, we can always come back, you know, and, and yeah. do it later, either together or maybe even from this discussion, you're ready to do it on your own. Okay. There are three different parts that we'll be playing with. We're going to isolate each one of them and then we'll put them all together. And that is what makes a long, deep breath. So we might place our hands on our abdomen. This works if we're sitting or laying. And we have a muscle called the diaphragm. It's our primary breathing muscle. And I picture it's like a trampoline. I jump on the trampoline with my kids all the time. When we jump down, the trampoline goes down, right? And then when we bounce up and we're up in the air, then that trampoline comes up. And our diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle. And so as we inhale and we're drawing air into the lungs, that diaphragm drops, which kind of displaces the organs in our abdomen. So our tummy, if we're laying on our back, should come up towards the ceiling. If we're sitting uh, up, or we're laying on our side, we should feel it coming out away from the core of our body. And then as we exhale, we intentionally scoop that abdomen up and in towards the spine. And if we notice here that we're breathing backwards, this is what we mean. Some people inhale and their tummy caves in and they exhale and it puffs out. Mm -hmm. And what I found in working with students who are observing that is if we really, really focus on that exhale and intentionally scooping up, if we get a full, complete exhale, then the lungs work like a vacuum. So then as we inhale, we're gonna draw in more air, which will uh, be more likely to activate this diaphragm and uh, extend it down low so that the tummy comes out. So again, we don't need to become frustrated if we're observing that we're breathing backwards. It can be something that we work on um, over time. But if we're breathing backwards, we can learn to breathe correctly. Okay. So that's key number one is we're inhaling our abdomen, our tummies coming up or out. Exhaling, we're scooping up in towards the spine. Now we talked about the three different parts to this long, deep breathing. Let's see if we can kind of isolate this abdominal area and doing our best to keep the chest as still as we possibly can. Let's maybe take a breath or two, really focusing on it going down deep, inhaling and exhaling in and out of the nose. That tummy's expanding out on the inhale, exhaling, scooping up and in. All right. And let's see if we can bring stillness now to that tummy area. I really like for this next area to hug myself. So I'm placing my right hand on my left ribs, my left hand on my right ribs. Let's see if we can focus on breathing here in the rib area. For me, I experience sensation that feels like I'm getting wide. I'm, I'm breathing out left to right. As I inhale again, this is proper breathing. Inhale and it expands out sideways. Exhale and I'm seeing if I can bring those bottom ribs towards touching. And again, we might notice backwards breathing here as well. But as we inhale, we're having expansion in the side body. Exhaling. 
and we're bringing ribs towards the center of our body. And as we're ready, bringing stillness to this area. And the last area that we will play with briefly is the upper chest. For me, I experience sensation kind of in my armpit area. Some people experience sensation in their upper back. It's our clavicle bones. It's, it's that last little part of our lungs that we kind of top off on a full breath. And for me, when I'm breathing in this upper chest area, my breath rate is more rapid. It's more shallow. And so as I've learned to pay more attention to my breath and my body, when I'm experiencing anxiety, this is typically how I'm breathing. It's just shallow, shallow, shallow. So let's plug the three all together like we talked about. Inhaling, breathing down into that belly area, expanding now out sideways and now topping off in the upper chest. And as we exhale, we'll exhale first from the upper lungs, then the middle rib cage area, and then finally scooping our belly up and in towards our spine. So taking a few breaths here, going at our own pace, we will inhale, fill up belly, fill up the rib cage area, finally topping off upper chest and exhaling from the top, ribs moving towards the middle of our body and abdomen scooping up and in. And if we are sitting or as we play with this in our office chair later on, if we're maybe laying down right now, for me, I experience more sensation in my low back when my core muscles are engaged, holding me in a seated posture. So we might be noticing that area. And when we are doing our yoga practice, we can't do long, deep breathing because again, our core is engaged. So we would be focusing that deep breath down into the low back. That's called a yogic breath so that we're able to uh, use the core and hold into the different postures. So any questions on that, Tamara? I don't know if you were breathing while I was talking. <laughs> I was trying to do the deep breathing and I'm getting better at it. I happen to do, uh, Katie has this free breathing course that we'll have to put show link, links to in the show notes that I did just earlier today. So I've been practicing my breathing today, Katie. You'd be very proud of me. <laughs> oh, I am so proud. And, and can I say um, something that I feel like this Christian audience may super, super be interested in is this two-hour course that you were mentioning is not only breath, but it's also what we call in yoga prana, which is the life force, the energy, and then grace. I'm not going to spoil how uh, here on yes. this episode, but I would invite you to go check that out and see my thoughts on how our breath relates to grace. That's awesome. It does. It's pretty cool. Thank you. So long, deep breathing is breath number one that you're going to teach us. What's, what's the next one? So if it's okay, let me back up. Um, long, deep breathing, obviously we can do anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and I wish this was uh, live so that I could interact with you and hear, you know, your audience what you experienced in even just a few breaths of breathing down to your full capacity. I will tell you that I know I, I sometimes carry a lot of my stress and anxiety kind of in that middle chest area, right? Kind of where my diaphragm is. And I noticed when I started your breathing class this morning that I kind of had that stress right there. It was just kind of a big ball of stress in the middle of my chest. And as I did the breathing, exercises and just kind of filled my lungs that that dissipated. And so it's interesting mm. that simply breathing can take that stress and just, it releases it. Yeah. And isn't it funny? It's so simple. Like this is I the know. least expensive tool, <laughs> the most simple tool anybody's probably going to hand you for stress relief. <laughs> Yet it's one of the most potent and powerful, you know, as you were talking, it reminded me of, um, where I work with a vast majority of my yoga students have struggled with trauma and or addiction. Mm. And it's interesting when I've worked with students with breath and with their permission, 
um, when they've been struggling to kind of isolate and locate these parts of their bodies, you know, placing my hands on their tummy and kind of pushing and giving a little bit of resistance. It's, it's sad and it's mind blowing how detached we can be from our bodies. And, and that's how we're coping is holding that knot right there. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause, mm-hmm. cause if the breath touches that we might fall apart. Right. <laughs> and so it can be such a new sensation. I know it was for me where I've spent most of my life living in my head. My breath has been reflective of that. It's been mm-hmm. shallow. It's been rapid. And so thank you for sharing that. I really yeah. appreciate that. Should we, should we build on this breath? Yes. And offer our next one. Okay. This next one, we will continue to breathe in and out of the nose. We'll continue in that pattern of inhaling abdomen and then expanding out the side through the ribs and then topping off in the clavicles. But we're going to add one thing. This is really trippy and cool. One of our nostrils is heating and the other nostril is cooling. And I know that you're playing with it right now as you're listening. (laughs) I love when I teach kids yoga, like they are not ashamed to like immediately plug one nostril and breathe and then the other. (laughs) So it's not only like physically heating and physically cooling, but it's also mentally, emotionally cooling Mm. or heating. So if we take our right thumb, plugging up our right nostril, and now we are only breathing in and out of our left nostril. Now, sometimes one nostril might feel a little bit more plugged than the other. It's interesting. We naturally shift from breathing primarily through one nostril and then the other. I think it's like every 90 minutes to two and a half hours, if I'm remembering right, we switch. And it's interesting when you think about your day, don't we have times of the day where we're more energized and we're more go-getter and then other days where we kind of, or other times during the day where we kind of slow down and it's more calm. So if you experience that left nostril feeling a little stuffy, it might be because we are not primarily breathing through that one. So, um, just would invite you, you know, again, to be patient, don't panic. Um, I can't remember which rib. I should have looked it up. I can't remember if it's rubbing that floating rib, those ribs that aren't attached to the sternum on the same side as the nostril or the opposite side. But as you breathe, if you feel like it's stuffy, try rubbing those ribs and it will help it to switch so that Mm. you're primarily breathing through the left nostril. So closing the eyes so left nostril is energizing. You're, you're the opposite. Left, thank you for clarifying, is cooling. It's oh, left, okay. um, Calm. calming and Calm. soothing. Right side would be if we're like, oh my gosh, I keep procrastinating. I need to get some oomph, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we're in the winter, you know, you can mm-hmm. wake up and do right nostril breathing. Thank you for clarifying that. So just clarifying, nostril breathing can be plugging one nostril, breathing in and out through that one, or you can rotate breathing in through one and breathing out through the other and rotate back and forth. Katie, let's practice this nostril breathing. Um, Closing the eyes if that feels safe or softening the gaze if eyes remain open. And we might choose to focus our gaze at that point just up from the bridge of the nose between the eyebrows. We call that in yoga the brow point. And for me, I really like to anchor my pointer finger and my middle finger on that on that brow point. Another option would be to just extend our forefinger straight up like an antenna. Mm. And inhaling through our nose, filling that abdomen area, now filling up the ribs, and then upper lungs. And as we're ready, going at our own pace, exhaling upper, bringing ribs towards touch, scooping abdomen up and in. I'm not going to plug my left nostril so that I can have a different instructor voice. Okay, so this would be, if you haven't caught, a great breath to help us to calm down 
to help us to connect with ourselves, to come back. That point there, that brow point, for me, I feel like it really helps me to tune in to my body and adding that pressure with my fingers um, really helps. Uh, I don't know if I dare advocate this. Sometimes when I'm driving, I'll do this. <laughs> Again, I've got four kids in the back of my minivan, you know? So, so if you I'm plug one place, nostril and then breathe. Yep. <laughs> when I can safely drive one-handed, sometimes I'm doing, you know, nostril breathing because I need that. Um, but I, I, I love, Tamara, that you pointed out that as you started to do the breath class, you noticed um, that energy kind of there around your diaphragm because there's a third breath that I wanted to bring into this context and you're describing it exactly um, where I wanted to go because sometimes we're stressed out because we've got some oomph that we've got to get out, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it's true. Yeah. So when I'm teaching a kid's yoga class, that means we're doing lion's breath, ah, you know, or we're mm -hmm. doing gorilla breath. Ah, we're beating our upper ribs. And we're, <laughs> um, that's the same reason why uh, I sing opera to my kids instead of yell at them is because sometimes I've got to get that oomph out. So instead <laughs> of like, pick up your toys, I'm like, pick up your toys, you know, because <laughs> I got to get that oomph out, you know? Mm. And so sometimes that's actually what we need to keep that pressure, pressure, rather than like, we've got this knotted up, you know, oomph down there to get out. And instead we're trying to do this long, deep breathing mm -hmm. and that might not be hitting the spot. Yeah. So this breath is what we call victory breath. Ooh, this sounds awesome. Let's oh, do it, it is. It is awesome. This one can be a really great breath for people who experience anxiety because it gives our mind multiple things that we have to focus on at once. Okay. Um, so it is a version of what we call segmented um, breath or stroke breath. And what segmented and stroke breathing is, it means we're breaking the breath up into certain ratios. So there's a lot of different versions of segmented and stroke breath. This particular breath, we will be dividing each inhale into thirds. So we'll sip in a third of the breath three times. And then we're, we're also dividing the exhale into thirds. Okay, so three little sniffs, three little sniffs out. Now we're building, we're still doing that long, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. We're still wanting to breathe down abdomen, ribs, upper, upper lungs, exhaling upper ribs, scooping abdomen up and in. Okay. But kind of cool. We can say, breathe into my abdomen on the first sniff, breathe into my middle rib area on the second and breathe into upper and reverse for the exhale. Um, the other element, we're calling it victory breath because we are thinking the word victory and we're mm. timing that with the sips as we inhale and as we exhale. Okay. So let's play with this. Closing the eyes again, if that feels safe, softening the gaze, if eyes remain open, really taking a moment to check in with our posture. You might still be laying down. For all I know, you still are. <laughs> so really allowing the ground to hold you. If we're in a seated posture, maybe taking a moment to really root down on our sit bones. For me, it helps to engage that navel like we talked about, the abdomen, those core muscles, so that it frees up uh, the tailbone to point straight down into the earth. And then I'm able to lift my heart, lift my chest, dropping our shoulders down and back and tucking the chin slightly back, seeing if we can align the ears over the shoulders. And are you okay if we do this, Tamara? Yes, yeah. let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. In and out of the nose.
as we're ready, inhaling, and we might choose to hold the breath on the inhale for just a moment. And as we're ready, exhaling, opening the eyes. Um, you can probably, hopefully, tune in and tell my body feels totally different after that breath. I'm experiencing quite a bit of sensation in my chest area, in my abdomen area. Mentally, emotionally, I feel a lot more energized. And this is an energizing breath. Tamara, did you have any comments or thoughts that you want oh, to share? Oh, I on like that, that one. That's awesome. <laughs> so I would recommend three minutes as a great start. I recognize life happens. We may not be able to drop everything and be like, just a second kids or just a second boss or, you know, um, some of these breaths we may not feel like we can do, you know, in a public setting, but here we taught you long, deep breathing. You can always do that. And nobody even needs to know that you're like, okay, just a second. I'm tuning into my breath. Right. <laughs> Um, but also like we talked about using yoga as a lifestyle here, I just gave you three options that if you did one of these breaths three minutes every day, that's life changing to learn to breathe properly. That is awesome. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. This has just been so, so amazing. And websites, if, if people are interested in learning more about yoga or about breath, we'll obviously put the link to your, your class in the show notes, but what else? Um, okay, so I'm glad that you asked. I found Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan and meditation um, as my first exposure to yoga. So there are a number of websites that I would recommend where you can... Um, find instructions for more breath exercises like we did. There's definitely more in that class that we keep talking about over on my mm -hmm. website. Um, also, these websites would have some meditations and what we call Kriyas. They're different exercise sets that create a whole complete experience. So there would be written instructions. There would be videos to any of those. Um, so those could be some really, really great resources um, for yoga. And uh, Tamara, you and I talked before we started recording, I am aware, but not from personal experience where I had a different yoga experience, but there are a number of apps that have come across my path, you know, as far as um, different ones that would help to encourage you with your breathing, like, okay, inhale for four seconds and it has beautiful graphics and it counts to four for you. <laughs> um, so there would be a number of different apps, you know, that you probably could find that would really, really help you um, with these types of things. Oh, thank you so much. And there you have it, folks. We have learned so much in just the short time we've been able to spend together. Thank you, Katie, for being willing to share your expertise from years of experience. And thank you for researching this so that not only it could help you, but it now helps us. <laughs> mm, thank you for having me today. It's my treat. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. I know that there are many of you out there that are going through a hard time and I hope you found things that have been useful today as you listen to the podcast. If you would like to access the show notes from today's podcast, visit my website. It is storiesofhopepodcast.com. That is where you'll find favorite quotes from today's episode and shareable memes. And those are fun because you can share them with your friends on social media. You will also find the links mentioned throughout today's episode so you don't have to remember what those were. And also all the tips that were shared. Sometimes tips are shared so much throughout an episode you forget. What were those great things? So go to the show notes, storiesofhopepodcast.com to look up these fantastic resources. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a tip that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this episode with them. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help bear that burden. Above all else, Remember, God loves you.